I dropped her off for a work trip, only to find her in Vegas with our doctor this Christmas. I'm exposing her affair in front of our entire family. I have worked my crap off to finally be debt-free and two years away from retirement. She tells me she is in Arizona for an educator's conference she is required to attend. I dropped her lying crap off at the airport with plans to pick her up Thursday. A co-worker of mine is in Vegas for a PBR event. He sends me a picture of her in a casino with our primary care physician. So, it's Christmas and all the kids are coming here. I have looked forward to hunting with my son and grandsons. So I don't know if I should blow the thing to hell or play it cool until after Christmas. I guess I could gather more evidence if I just pick her up and act as if all is well. I am not sure I can do that, but the other choice is to devastate my children at a terrible time of the year. This tramp sang a solo in church Sunday before she caught a flight on Monday to spend the week effing the doctor. I have never suspected her cheating in over 40 years of our relationship. I damn sure never have. I guess the life I was so secure in is over. So I am glad my parents are not here to see this. I may just catch a flight tomorrow and find their crap. Probably use different names. The hell of it is both my brothers are dead and there is nobody I can tell this crap to. Maybe the pastor. Hell, she is probably blowing him too. Update 1. I hired a lawyer and a pie this afternoon. We all met at the lawyer's office and they both advised me on the course of action to take. So I arranged for her sister to pick her up tomorrow and I am at my camp for a few days. So far I have been able to keep from telling her I know what she has done. It is hard not to confront both of them, but if I can keep from it, I will be better able to protect myself, plus gain more evidence. I can't sue him for alienation of affection, however I intend to ruin his future. Update 2 I'm going home tonight. My mother-in-law is 84 and has been widowed for 12 years. She will be devastated by my wife's cheating. My wife has three married sisters who are all in long-term marriages. So they are coming to our house for Christmas tomorrow night. I have grilled steaks for them since my father-in-law died every Christmas. So if I don't go home for this it will raise red flags for her. I considered faking the flu and staying here. I decided to just go home. If I don't go home it will affect the plans to come back with my son and grandsons. I have not confronted her. We have talked some but mainly have texted. I am positive she suspects nothing at this point. I gave the code for gate and house to PL. He took an IT guy and was able to access her desktop while she was at work. Some way he is receiving her texts now from my cloud. I don't really understand how he was able to accomplish this, but he did. I am not in contact with the PI or lawyer every day. I have no idea what all he has been able to find. I have an appointment to meet with him and my attorney next Friday morning, one week from tomorrow. It is hard enough for me to control my anger with what I know now. I believe I am spending unnecessarily at this point for PL. However, the attorney wants me to continue to gather evidence until I confront her. I plan to get what he is next week and be able to quit paying him. I always go to camp the week before and after Christmas. She will suspect nothing if I can hold off slapping the crap out of her when I get home. I will leave again Sunday. My son and grandsons are scheduled to hunt the week before Christmas as we do every year. So I have not seen her in almost two weeks. I never thought the love I had for her could turn to this much hatred and contempt. My plan is to gift wrap the evidence I get next Friday. After Christmas lunch we will open gifts with our children and grandchildren. So I am going to let her open hers last, tell her to show our children, take her phone, and leave. So my next stop will be the doctor's house where I will deliver the evidence to his wife and family. I will then file for divorce on the grounds of Intai. Thanks for allowing me to share my story real time. It is the only outlet at this point I have. Update 3, I came home from the camp last Thursday evening. She was home. I was exhausted from not being able to sleep, and our conversation was minimal. Friday night we had our Christmas gathering with her mother and three sisters at our house. So I was able to pull that off without her suspecting anything. Saturday was gone most of the day, and after church Sunday I returned to my camp. So my son and grandson met me, and my oldest grandson there Sunday night. We hunted all week, and I have returned home tonight. We have no plans for tomorrow. Our children and grandchildren will attend church with us, Sunday, and then come here for Christmas lunch and gifts. I have been able to control my emotions in a manner no one has suspected the life-changing situation I am in. I have reconsidered the to use to reveal her affair. I am not going to confront her on Christmas. I have an appointment with my attorney Tuesday morning. I intend to get all the evidence he and the investigator have gathered, along with the divorce papers he has drawn up. 
I intend to have my son and two daughters come to our house for a family meeting and expose her affair to them as well as confront her at the same time. I want to do this Tuesday night. I am not sure at this point how I will confront the doctor and his wife. My intentions are to destroy his reputation and career through any means available to me. Thanks for your messages of support. Update 4 We made it through Christmas with my children grandchildren and in-laws. Monday morning I went and saw my pastor and told him the situation. He facilitated a meeting with me and AP's wife. He agreed to confront our spouses on Monday night requiring them to write a detailed letter of the affair. So I did and did not allow my wife to say anything to me. I told her I knew she was in Vegas and who she was with. So I told her to write the letter of detail and if there was any contradiction to evidence I had there with no chance of reconciliation. Tuesday morning I met with attorney and obtained evidence collected and received advice from my attorney. Tuesday afternoon met with APZM's employer demanding he be terminated. He was today. Tuesday night my children came and their mother told them what she had done. They are shocked and hurt. So my wife went home with my daughter and remains there still. I am trying to decide my best course of action. I see no path to reconciliation. I will determine what other action to take with AP after I'm sure of what I need to do with my own marriage. She confessed to everything and gave an answer for every specific detail I required in her letter. Thanks for your well wishes. I am doing fine considering where I am. Update 5 I am going to try to answer your questions. So did you ask her why? Of course I asked why. She said she didn't know why. She described to me and my children that she felt like an addict. She knew she was destroying her life, but would not stop. She told our children, no child should ever have to be disappointed or embarrassed by their mother's immortality. That they didn't deserve the shame of a tramp. I am not going to say all she has said to me, simply because I don't know if any of it is true. 2. How did she act? She is completely destroyed, remorseful, begging for forgiveness from me and children. She does understand what she has done. 3. How did my children react? By one telling her, and the other two agreeing, it would have been easier to bury you than this. 4. Do I want to be married? Sure I do. That's why I didn't ever cheat on my wife. 5. Have I met the AP's wife and told her? Yes, we have met twice, communicated by phone and text several times. 6. Do I not care for his family by having him fired? I care more for the next patient's wife he gets a hard on for. 7. Am I divorcing her? I don't know. 8. Have I sought therapy? Not at this time. What I need is for this to go away. If you know of anyone that can make that happen, by all means I will do therapy. I can tell you that every situation is unique in its elements, personalities, and complexities. I could and would have dealt differently at a different time of my life than I am now. It is very easy to know just what to do when you are behind a keyboard. Some of you are keyboard experts, but are not very skilled in advice. Some of the comments you have made are without you knowing every nuance I am dealing with. Others have been a great source of strength. One Redditor has been a valuable source of wisdom, knowledge, and encouragement to me. He has helped me in more ways than I will even try to thank him for. It is very strange of my personality to have found such a kindred spirit with an anonymous soul. That is about all the questions I remember, but I'm going to browse some subs for a while so hell. Just ask me whatever you want to know. It ain't like I got to spend quality time with my wife. She ain't chair. Oh yeah, why is she at my daughter's and not my in-laws? Her dad is dead. Her mom is 84. What the hell? I don't want her mom to have to deal with this BS. She is at my baby daughter and her husband's home. They have no children yet. The chance of her turning any of my children against me does not exist, but that is especially true of this little spitfire. She is 10 years younger than her sister and 12 years than her brother. She has spent more hours in a deer stand, bay boat, office, truck with me than we could even begin to count. She won't even let her say the true things that are bad about me, much less lies. The first text was him asking her, how does it feel to be the most beautiful person in any room you enter? This was referring to a funeral we had all attended. I don't either. My sister-in-law told me my mother made a comment to her when my wife got Brit implants about 30 years ago. My mother said she will be showing those new craps to someone else. I don't think I can ever get over her getting on her knees and blowing him. She is a beautiful woman who has been told that all her life, but time is starting to show and she can't handle that. She has done well in staying ahead of it, but it's a race everyone loses. I did not tell my wife what I was going to do about anything. I assume she does not know. My daughter said her phone is dead and she has not had any communication with anyone but our children. I don't know for sure if she knows or not. 
The AP's wife called me when she learned he was fired and said she was going after my wife's job. So I told my wife when I confronted her the AP's wife knew and was requiring him to answer by letter the same questions as I asked her. Update 6. I had a brother who was 14 years younger than me. He was a college professor and lived eight and a half hours from our hometown. He died in a motorcycle accident in 2017. He left one daughter who is now 24, married, and lives in another state than her mother, but has brought her new baby home to see her mother and in-laws. So my sister-in-law has never remarried. I called my sill last night to find out when my niece was going back home. She is actually staying this week with her husband's parents who are about 40 minutes from my sister-in-law. So my children are smothering me, so I am taking a road trip. I am going to meet my great-nephew, who is named after my brother in me. I will arrive late tonight. I asked her to reserve me a hotel room, to which she replied, There is no way in hell that's happening. You will stay here, and we will watch movies and eat ice cream. I don't know when I am coming back. I have not spoken to, seen, or communicated with my wife since Tuesday night. I have blocked her number. I called my son and told him where I was going, and for him to go by the office and lease a rental property my company owns. It is a house renters moved out of and has been completely renovated with the intent to sell. I told him to inform his mother to come and get what she wanted needed from our house and move in the rent house. She is to pay rent to my son, who will pay my company. I am having new keypad installed on gate and doors to my house Wednesday, so if she needs her stuff, now is the time to fetch it. Update 7 When I called my sister-in-law I told her I would be coming alone to see my niece and her new baby. She asked me why my wife was not coming, and I just said there are some issues I will tell you when I get there. I got here around midnight, and she had just took a hot pound cake out of the oven. So it was the best thing I have eaten in weeks. I gave her all the details of my saga. I have teared up a few times, but as I went through all of it with her I broke down and wept. She was very supportive and wept with me. She stroked my bursted ego, and I guess I felt better after we talked. I went upstairs to bed about three o'clock yesterday morning. Yesterday morning she cooked me bacon and eggs for breakfast, and as I ate she told me that I may make the rules and run the show back home, but not at her house. She then proceeded to tell me my schedule. 1. At 1 o'clock I had a haircut appointment. I needed a haircut when this all happened, and it was overdue so I agreed. 2. After the haircut we were going to Dillard's and buy some clothes that fit me. I have lost over 30 pounds in three weeks. 3. I was going to go with her to a friend's house that was having a bonfire and fireworks for a little while last night. 4. I was going to go with her to church today, and she was going to go visit her parents this afternoon. 5. She is cooking supper tonight, and her daughter and son-in-law are coming to eat and visit. 6. Her son-in-law is taking me deer hunting tomorrow with dogs on an 8,000-acre timber co-lease he is a part of. He is off all week and if I want to I can stay and hunt all week if I want to, and she will wash my clothes and feed me. I have never done it, so I don't know what to expect. 7. So we are not going to talk about my problems again until I leave to go home. So hell, I did what I was told to do. She went with me to her regular salon. On the way there she said I'm going to use you to have some fun. When I introduce you, I'm going to give them your first and middle name. I asked her what the hell and she just laughed and said just play along. I am going to give these tramps something to talk about. My middle name is my mother's maiden name, and that's how she introduced me to her hairstylist. During my haircut she asked me where I was from, and I told her Detroit. There is no way my accent would allow me to be from Detroit. My sister-in-law never missed a beat and said he's a logger. Next stop Dillard's. I have not been shopping for anything in years. Wound up buying three new pants, four shirts, two pairs of shoes, a tie, can you believe 75 for a tie? And a heart, Schaefer, Mark suit. According to her, it is the only suit my brother would wear. So I did not know he was so peculiar about his clothes. I also bought a new belt. The suit had to be hemmed, and she convinced them to do it while we waited. On the way home, she told me I was going to be her date for the party in church, so I was. She told me to look at her like I looked at a new gun so they would buy it. I went along with her, except at the party I was from Atlanta, and I sold road graders and had been married and divorced four times. At church this morning we got there late and left early, because she doesn't want to be struck by lightning for lying in church. She sat right up under me, and gelled my hand when we walked out. I have had a good time looking like dumb, and dumber with my 46-year-old sister-in-law. 
She has cut up the whole time, and I have laughed, genuinely laughed. I have not done that for three weeks. I am going to hunt tomorrow and may stay until Wednesday, but I have to be at work Friday. I have talked to my son a couple of times. He thinks they need to try to get her some medical help. She evidently is not saying much and stays in her bedroom at my daughter's house most of the time. Her phone is dead, and he and my other daughter communicate with her through my youngest. The AP's wife sent her a long text in which she called her everything but a child of God. I have not communicated with my wife. She asked where I was, and told my daughter I would never be able to forgive her, and she didn't blame me for not forgiving, so my son said she looks like death. I still see no path to reconciliation, however I'm not going to file for divorce until I'm completely sure. Some have said divorce and reconcile if I change my mind. That seems like a waste of time, energy, and money. So when I decide to divorce it will be final. I also am not going to sue AP if I don't divorce. If I do divorce I will sue him to defray what the divorce settlement will be, otherwise I don't want his money. I have come to terms with the fact this is not going to end soon, and that my life will never be the same. I started keeping a journal today, I have realized it helps the order of my thoughts by writing them down. Thanks again for your encouragement, it has helped me. Update 8 My daughters took my wife to ER yesterday morning. She was dehydrated. Tests showed her kidney function was not what it should be. She was exhibiting signs of confusion, she was admitted drip started, and labs will be done again today. A psych evaluation has also been ordered for her. They were told to expect her to be in hospital for most of the week. So my son contacted her sisters and told them she was hospitalized and that I was out of town. Her sisters and mother are unaware of her affair to my knowledge. I plan on going and sitting down with her mother and oldest sister this weekend. So looking back I should have done that this past Friday before I left town. I am still at my sister-in-law's house. Spark plug. So I hunted yesterday, but it is raining today and I opted not to go again this morning. So last night a menu was fried steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, homemade biscuits, apple cobbler and ice cream. She had a couple of things to do this morning, but has instructed me to be dressed when she gets back and be ready to do some rambling, whatever that means. I told her rainy days were good for two things and I wasn't sleepy. She came back with, your children don't need both of their parents in hospital from dehydration. So I am going rambling, I guess. I am glad I am here. I really don't want to talk to my friends just yet, nor do I want to be at work. I have my laptop and phone, an assistant co-worker that has been with me 25 years, so business is being conducted as usual. He is aware of the affair because he was the one who made me aware of the Vegas trip. While hashing all of this out on Reddit has been helpful to me, you are tiring of my posts. I have started a journal and can just write there if you have lost interest in my story. Thanks again for all of your messages. Many have been very thought-provoking and helpful. My mind is in the clearest place it has been since the text I received of her and AP partner. Thanks in no small part to you. Update 9 I called her sister and gave her a basic summary of the affair and what led to hospitalization of my wife. She was genuinely shocked and profusely apologetic and sympathetic. My mother-in-law is leaving tomorrow morning on a trip with three other widows she is friends with. My daughters call it the Bay Gang, Blue-Haired Ho. They like to take bus tours. She said she was not going to tell her about the affair, nor psych evaluation just that my wife's condition did not seem serious enough for me to return home from trip, that I was with others, and that would have to return with me, and it was not necessary for me to come as of now. She also said my mother-in-law was very worried about me when they left my house, that I did not see myself and looked very troubled. The sisters are going to help my daughter-in-law with hospital stay, and one of them will take her home with them until she is able to move from our house. I called my baby daughter and told her to go by the office and get a check go cash it, buy a card, and take it by her grandmother's house. I have a name stamp at office she can sign the card with, to put a note in it to enjoy her trip and that I loved her. So, thanks again for Reddit catching something that I needed to do I had not thought of. Update 10, turns out rambling included grocery store, dry cleaners, pay electrical bill, home depot, and not least, a test at a clinic. $112 and 15 minutes later I learn, I have no STD. Spark plug in a very matter of fact manner explained to me, ain't no man with a junky monkey staying at my house. So, for those of you advising me to go through this humiliating experience, rest easy. I am clean. My wife's kidney function has improved, but according to a psychiatric evaluation, she has a psychotic break. She is confused about where she is and believes she and I were involved in a traffic accident and I am dead. She is upset my funeral was held without her. 
She is crying and mumbling things they can't understand. Tonight they moved her to a hospital specializing in mental trauma. They expect she will fully recover in days or weeks. She can have no contact with anyone for ten days. My middle daughter is going to be the family contact for afternoon updates until she can be visited. What an unbelievable, unnecessary mess this has been. I am still at Sparky's and she scheduled me a 9.30 appointment in the morning with a psychiatrist she saw for two following my brother's tragic death. I came up and got my shower. When I was putting on my pajamas to go back downstairs, I discovered all of my perfectly good white fruit of the loom boxer shorts were gone. They had been replaced by boxer briefs from Duluth Trading Company. The band around each one says Go Buck Beard. They are red, black, neon blue, maroon, and dark and light gray. When I asked her about it, she said the 60s called and wanted them ugly drawers back. Plus the boy's next brief. Update 11, I returned to my home Thursday night. I had an appointment Thursday morning with a psychologist my sister-in-law used following the death of my brother, her husband. It was not a good meeting. In all fairness to the counselor, I went into it reluctantly and was very angry at the time. I felt very uncomfortable discussing the details of my wife's affair with her. I had to be at work Friday for a contract addendum meeting that required my presence and signature on a modified agreement. I met with my children Friday afternoon to discuss their mother's status. The clinician requested we submit a plan for her discharge to help them fully prepare her and her treatment. I remained firm she couldn't return home to live and they should prepare her to move into a rental property. Her status report today was encouraging in the progress she made over the weekend. They are also wanting sessions with her family as early as their ease the end of this week. I explained to my children I would not be attending any family sessions. I expressed to them her recovery was not on me, and I was not going to participate in it. I am not sure they fully agree with my approach, but that is the approach I am taking. I did commit to not filing for divorce in the next six months. I went to church Sunday and sat where we have sat for nearly 40 years. None of the AP's family was there, and I didn't inquire of my pastor as to their status, because I don't give a damn. I met this afternoon with a physiologist recommended by my pastor. It was a productive meeting for me. He is 74 years old. He works part-time from office behind his home. He explained to me the goals he would like to reach with me. I agreed I needed to obtain every step he outlined. I like him and am comfortable with him. I agree to meet on a weekly basis. An investigator is scheduled to come to my office from the State Medical Board Examiner's Office Wednesday morning. This follows a complaint filed by attorney against AP. I will be required to give a sworn deposition concerning the affair. I resent every step I have to take as a result of her affair. I don't believe she is faking a mental breakdown, however, I am finding it very difficult to be sympathetic. I think I have caught you up.